game live on Supersport here in South Africa, back home on Sky Sports and around the world on YouTube. Simi Umtaka alongside me, Caroline Parker. For the next 60, could be more, could be more. Go on then, make a bold prediction, Simi, as a former South Africa player, not long retired. Can you handle some more extra time? Absolutely. Listen, this, this game is massive for South Africa. They don't have a choice. They have to win. Um, it's one of those games that, because we want to go in tomorrow's um, final match on a draw and, and then start this competition from scratch. But uh, I'll put it on the spot, Proteus. 3 p.m. local time here at the Belleville Velodrome. Exhausting was how one fan described yesterday. Just don't ask the players. One o'clock back home in the UK. And it'll be South Africa with the first centre pass. And this is the second match of the three match defense. series. England, one up. Can they take this one to take the series or will South Africa take us to a decider on Sunday? Already quick into the circle. South Africa coach hard. was asking for more drive, saying more urgency, driving through the middle to really cut England apart. Yeah, I thought uh, Roma Dre did that exceptionally well um, yesterday, but um, we know that uh, is it. Um, Chrysal also comes through with a lot of experience, and I think that certainly explains, uh, you know, the introduction of Chrysal um, on centre, looking for those drives, and I think just the connection, you know, from the defenders through to the shooters. All well and good driving. Sometimes you've got to take the handbrake off, and it's England, though, that get that first goal. Ellie Cardwell, Manchester Thunder player in the Super League, just been a real rock, so steady, and trying to prove her worth. One of a number of players who stood out for the Roses and Jess Thurlby's side yesterday. Centre pass for South Africa. Chowani and Somi Kumbani. Van der Merwe, who was player of the match yesterday. As Grizel, one of those changes. Yeah, she didn't have a superb, uh, I think, run yesterday um, against the English Roses. And she'll be looking to pick up from where she left off. I thought she made a massive contribution defensively for the Spark Proteas. I mean, we talk a lot about Radoman. How many caps did she get during the, the Africa Cup? That's a cruel one for me to throw at you. But that was her debut for South Africa. This is the first time we've seen them go head to head. And never mind about that, because it's the defensive engine that's working for South Africa at the moment. Yeah, you know, they seem to have, uh, you know, fine-tuned, I think, their combination with Maweni and uh, Van Merwe because there were a lot of, um, I think, questions about uh, missing Carla Pretorius. But uh, really, I have to give credit to these two players because I think they've stepped up. And that is Radaman, the little step in. Oh, and it was her soft feet, the quick movement that really made her stand out from that third quarter on yesterday. 2-2. Two -two. Quickly tied up, eh? Yeah, that's exactly what we want uh, in the beginning stages, but... Um, not towards the end for extra time. Definitely not. <laughs> we, listen, I cannot take any more anxiety given uh, how yesterday's games transpired. We need a result at the end of the 60 minutes. <laughs> The voice of Simeon Tucker. You can get involved too on social media. Use the hashtag SS Super Sport or at Skynet. Ah, oh, that was simple. Simple looks good, right? Yeah, it certainly does. And uh, does take the spot Proteas uh, on a lead. Uh, they did start off slowly in this match, but it's good to see that uh, they're fighting and they uh, definitely looking, uh, I think, to seal this one in the early stages of the game. Oh, good back up from Kadeen Corbin. South Africa. That's easier said than done, isn't it? You just that physical strength that South Africa have in that third. circle. Centre third. A little bit of confusion there. Umpire signalling that it is in the centre third, but uh, Shasha doesn't want to go over the transverse line. There's Hayton Drake, England captain. Good movement from Corbin again. And Kadeen Corbin, maybe, maybe with something to prove. She was put on the bench uh, during yesterday's game, but come out again like yesterday, just with that real cylinder. Yeah, she's, she's quite a phenomenal player. I think uh, with a lot of talent and flair, you know, that she brings into the shooting circle of, of the English Roses. But um, um, I did feel that, uh, you know, her concentration might have dipped a little bit. So it was a good call by the coach to make a couple of changes in that circle. Um, it did definitely work for the English Roses. 
Radama will have a, another go. She was adjusting all the way around that post, finding her range, takes a little lean back. Again, just pops out. Nearly every one of those was going in yesterday. It's a good option there by Wongim Somi. There's the next generation of netballers watching on from the side. And that's how much this will mean the World Cup going to be here. I mean, personally, I'm not a huge fan of the Vivu Sailors, but that's, that's mainly because I'm almost deaf in one ear, and it might take out the other. But I'd happily come here and hear them again. Oh, just too much. Tried yeah. to keep that one on. Yeah, there was a good attempt there by Cardwell, but a little bit overcooked. But um, it is an opportunity for the Spa Pro Tiers, and I think we're all looking in on them to see if they're able to capitalize on this one. So this, and again, we saw this a bit yesterday. Each team putting a run of two goals on, but that was key. Yeah, it certainly was. Um, but I think uh, what, what's also working well for both teams, I think defensively at least, is that um, all seven players, just the transition from attack to defense is superb. I mean, that was a great steal there by Jade Clark, um, putting England back on the run to look to capitalize on this one. Back with her. Next to the goal defence. Yes. They stand together. Cardwell Three steps forward. The lovely the little layoff. That one won't count. Back with her. Everyone's yes. got a musical statues, haven't they? South Africa. Strong bench from England. Options. Jess Thelby, the coach, saying that this is the high level netball. So you've got to try and not make too many substitutions. You want to try and fix those combinations. That was beautiful. Radaman again. Thought she was going to go for the one hand shot then. And maybe that little bit of hesitation gives England that opportunity. Yeah, I think uh, she could have taken that one, but perhaps uh, looking to place herself close to the goalpost. But I mean, that's good work there by Francis. England. Stacey Francis with a 68th cap for England after that couple of years break. No, that's uh, <laughs> I want to say a rookie error, that but um, you cannot, ab absolutely cannot leave Cardwell on her own because she will punish you. That's exactly what she's done there. But that was the speed, wasn't it? That was well of, of just England moving Context and shifting that ball. Yeah, I, I just don't think, you know, we can afford to leave any players unmarked at this level because, to your point, she's got the speed and uh, leaving that whole circle open is really, really asking for trouble. Just under eight minutes of this first quarter to go. England with a two-goal advantage. They won the first and second quarters in that first test, lost the third quarter to South Africa, all tied up at the end of the fourth, and we went into extra time. Polkita, an uncharacteristic from her in these early stages. Yeah, I think what's concerning uh, Caroline, just the beginning stages of this game, is how much ball's been turned in the shooting third of the spot. Oh, there you go. Yeah, and the other end too. <laughs> That's well done. That's an exceptional <laughs> intercept there from Van der Merwe. Obstruction. Obstruction. Yes. Much better piece of play from the Spark Pro Tiers. So tight this game. England one up in the series. Both these sides will go head to head again in January in the Nations Cup. And we heard Bongi and Somi talking beforehand about this is what it's about. The pride of winning at home, yes, but, but showing you can go into that tournament in the new year and contend with England, with New Zealand and Jamaica. Yeah, it's going to be a big one, definitely, for the Spark approaches. I think, you know, given what a tough year we've had against the English Roses, uh, there's the pride, there's, you know, that also notion of we actually want to show that we can compete and come up victorious against this side. Uh, just too much on that from Trawani. Ball. 
Timmy, can you see differences in the setup from yesterday? What tactically the coaches have changed overnight? I think, I mean, if I just look at, um, is it uh, Hrissel and Kanisa Chawani starting? Um, in that midcourt, they definitely much more solid from a defensive perspective. Yet a Romy Dre, I think, was more on the attacking side, very instrumental. But uh, today, it's almost as if they want to shut down the, the attacking, um, you know, force of the English Roses. And that's what uh, Chrysal and Kanisa Chawana bring to the table. Oh, there was a wipeout in that circle. Williams went down on one knee, no proposals in South Africa. Make it 7-8. <laughs> what was that look? from Lise Pogita then. Quizzical. What more can they do? Oh, that's a brilliant one. That's great take there. But that was set up by Chrysal before Rodeman picked it up. And that's the power I'm talking about in terms of this defensive unit, um, you know, that's being brought forward in today's game by the Spa Proteus. Guess what? 8-8. Eight, eight. We're all level again. I'm not happy. <laughs> I'm so nervous about how this game is turning out uh, because that extra time is uh, creeping the way oh, things are going. Oh, look at that. A back bend, the lean. Such a shame, all that great agility that, that I couldn't stay in South Africa hands. Now Malcolm has it. Captain Haythorn Freight comes out for it, looking for options. Great defensive work again. And Clark, 171st cap. So Haythorn Thwait back into Kadeem Corbin. Oh, that's good hands there between Haythorn Thwaite and Corbin. Real sense of urgency from England. England! 45th cap for Nat Haythorn Thwaite. England captain, of course, this captaincy new to her. How much space do you want in that circle? Caroline, you cannot cannot leave that circle open and uh, we've seen just how well Cardwell you know capitalized on that every time um, Pumza just steps out of it she she's happy she's at, she's at an oyster that's exactly what she wants this patient from South Africa important not to panic wait for that gap wait for that space the pass to arrive and then it comes up yeah and I think if they just continue playing like that you know just Safe passes, look for the open player, and uh, just don't rush it to the circle. It works well for the spot approaches. They need to continue on that path. Oh, goal for goal, straining every single muscle. Pumza did well there because she actually shut Cartwell down and didn't allow her to get close to the goal post. Um, so I thought that was cleverly played by Maweni. Former seven stars, Lapra Lightning, Pumza Maweni made her debut back in 2014 against Scotland. Real experience for her. There's Msomi. Oh! I mean, that was so soft in the hands, the release then, the transition through. Liquid. Yep, great appreciation right here at the Velodrome. And uh, that's exactly what uh, we're hoping to see from the Spark Pro Tears. Laura Malcolm called up for that one, and Somi just lightly into Pogita. I'll tell you this, I was really impressed by Malcolm. Um, she played wing attack yesterday, but she, she had such flair on the attack and defensive side. So I'm not surprised that she's starting off on wing defense today to possibly match up um, Somi on, on the attacking side, because um, I think that's where the, the fireworks are probably going to be coming on as far as the mid court's concerned. I think they're all over court at the moment, <laughs> aren't they? Back level again. <laughs> Two and a half minutes of this first quarter. Oh, see? When there is so much great pressure being put on across court, sometimes the head goes a little. Now England's chance. So you played you played is so important in those moments. You're gonna get so many more moments like that, aren't you? Just gotta let that one go. Yep, definitely. It is part of the game. So you let it go, but I think what's important is how quickly you recover, you know, from a moment like that. And uh, that's what's crucial, ultimately. It's how you bounce back from those errors. If you have a look behind, we saw the England players warming up on, on the bikes and just behind as well. They're applauding that one. They thought that one was in before it even left her hands. That's the trust that they have 
in Cardwell. Now South Africa looking to respond again. Grizel. Tokita came out to try and help drive the team forward. It's a setup. It's a setup well executed by the English Roses. They're just not giving the spark protest any room whatsoever. And it's almost like there's heightened intensity in uh, that defensive third of the English Roses. Come Set the trap up and they came into it. Corbin just getting a little closer to the post. The fly comes in from Van der Merwe. Great timing from Kadeem Corbin. Now all of a sudden, that England with that little, the, the smallest of gaps opens up. Context. Cardwell does it again. That's She's that's left unmarked in the circle. And uh, it's too easy. Every time there's no defender in the circle, she, she's literally, you know, at her element. Well, we're looking for points of difference from yesterday. If South Africa can get this ball down quickly, transition quickly, and ultimately get the goal and make it 12 15, then guess what? Press repeats on yesterday's game. The end of the first quarter yesterday, exactly the same score. Corbin. <laughs> I don't think I like where this is going. Oh, well, it might. Cardwell, can she beat the whistle? Who's just gone? Shot, She'll get the chance at the shot. Yes. I love a bit of symmetry. She's about to break that. Cardwell then puts the extra goal on for England. Yesterday, of course, we saw South Africa come back and tie it up at the end of the four quarters. But it's England with that four goal lead. They've been level pegging throughout. But England 16 12 at the end of just the first quarter. as yesterday Simi would we get all tied up into extra time well but for one last goal from Ellie Cardwell so close so close but real intensity from both sides when they came out yeah a lot of intensity definitely from both sides but I think uh, what stood out for me is just um, how defensively stronger much stronger um, England is especially in the shooting third of the spark projects and that for me is where the difference has been in this quarter Looking for more drive through that center, but there have been errors from both sides. The intercepts have been flying in, and what we've got heading into that second quarter, still from England, that impressive goal percentage, 94%, and that's way up on yesterday. Yeah, certainly, and I think, you, I mean, you can see how Cartwell is just um, connecting and playing with Corbin in that uh, circle, and that's where the difference is. They're efficient, they're converging, they're accurate. England with the rebounds to we'll talk about that height advantage, perhaps, perhaps in the run up to this series that South Africa might have. But the agility and the bounce from England in that circle at the moment proving crucial. Definitely is. It's almost as if, um, you know, they, they charged up their gear and they're well positioned uh, for those rebounds. And it is working. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how the spot approaches um, counter that. when we were in the dressing room prior to their arrival there were liquids absolutely everywhere hydration absolutely key of course but there were also these positive messages pictures of teams that have come before those that they've worked with before too will we see though a new england rose kate shimmin there 
make make her debut possibly, but Jess Thirlby is keen for her side to remain the same, to walk through those partnerships, to cement those options on court. Having a little look around the England team just away to our right, but as South Africa come on, Simeon Tucker alongside me, uh, any changes that you spot? I spot a very tall one, Ziggy Berger. Yeah, that's quite a surprising one. Uh, Berger and Shooter and uh, Bordgitter and goal attack. Um, it's going to be quite interesting to see how those two fare in this quarter. Centre pass for South Africa, Diamond getting us underway in this Kondé second Kondé. quarter. Live on Super Sports, Sky Sports yes. and on YouTube. Simeon Tucker alongside me. The change from South Africa then with Ziggy Berger. Familiar to many five. back home in the UK. Nice contact, but it's an advantage Off to play with Sam Bird at Pulse for the coming season. Of course, England her second inside. home. So she has inside. that goal shooter Vibon. Yeah, we don't uh, see Borgheter on goal attack uh, a lot. So or often, so it's good to you know to see that uh, Dorit Badenhorst is uh, exploring this combination. So so far so good for the Spa Proteas. Haythorn Thwait, quick combination with Corbin. That Haythorn Thwait who moved to that goal attack position in the latter stages of the game yesterday. That three so settled for that England attacking unit. As Todd Gita come out of that circle on the move. Top picked up there by Grissel. Still a little bit uh, messy in that um, shooting third of the Spark Protest, but I suppose uh, Berger just trying to settle in and the team trying to adjust to the changes that have been made. Oh, and if they can get some joy the other end. Fine. Kadisa Chirani, who's again one of those players who will be playing in the Super League, but England with that ball in hand. Clark on the edge of the circle. Great movement off the body from Carwell, creating her own space and popping another in. Yeah, she's been quite impressive uh, with uh, a great, I think, conversion rate. Just uh, demonstrating her ability in terms of. Uh, of uh, that, um, I think, quite a high goal shooting percentage. Oh, that's good pressure there from uh, Williams and Francis, just shutting down the spot Proteus, and that resulted in that uh, throw in. Oh, what was that? <laughs> I mean, I'm not expecting you to explain it. I mean, after such a phenomenal, I think, performance uh, put up by those who just to hand it over, you know, to the spot projects, I'm just like, yeah, you can have it. Wow. <laughs> I was about to say, maybe there's hope for me, but there's not. <laughs> <Clearly>. <laughs> These things happen. It's how you react to game. Great splits from Berger. She's got the height in that okay. circle. She's been working with, with Sam Burr, with Vicky Wilson, and when you, you talk to Ziggy Berger, she says this is the best that she's been playing. But there's another moment. Oh, great agility from Corbin to make that still happen. Yep, certainly. She's such an athletic player and uh, really is uh, incredible, I think, uh, on the attacking side in the shooting circle of the Roses. Possession. She wasn't letting that ball go, was she? <laughs> Not a chance. Contact with the body. Fine. The side keeper. South Africa. Oh, that's a pressured pass there. So I'm looking for support in uh, Van der Merwe. But I mean, look at this setup. All the English Roses marking their players man to man. Yeah, Ziggy Berger went on a run and she was taken all the way. But good again from her. She's playing with her shoulders back. She's playing with a, a bit of confidence too. Yeah, and she's anchoring Caroline. You know, she's marking a territory and she's making it visibly clear to, to the team where she wants the ball. And I think she's doing that so well.
Jake Point Clark working please. tirelessly there in that shooting third. Fine. She always plays, and, and that's the experience, isn't it? You know, the, the head clock that's there, playing right on the edge of the three seconds. And making that's sure she's side. there, just in case she needs to make amends for her team. It's got a bit congested in there. Yeah, totally. And uh, she did well there, so... Uh, I think the game just signals, you know, how, how much precision is required in this game from, from both teams, especially after such an incredible steal. Oh, Berger, again, plenty to think about in that circle now for England. But that difficulty of readjusting in game. Yeah, and I wanted to say that, you know, what's working for the spot approach is that when it's one and one with Berger in the circle, they, they, they just give it and it works. And I mean, that's what the spot approach is to capitalize on. Now, some of this might be some tiredness as well. I know we're in the second quarter, but after all that went yesterday, it feels like perhaps get some tension out of those legs as well. Now South Africa come again. Great work in both these sides defensively, forcing the ball. You've got to have some great core if you're going to try and get that ball, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, certainly, but um, I think she got away there, um, thanks to the contact from, from Corbin. But yeah, you, you would need to have lots of balance and a, a very strong core to be able to, to balance from that. Ziggy Berger at 194 centimetres. So she's got 14 centimetres on, on Francis and on Williams as well. She's got six on her. It's just really that height at the moment. And that reach and also that physicality of Ziggy Berger that's telling. Yeah, and I want to say, you know, there was a point where, you know, just having height advantage was good enough, but uh, that's not the case anymore, given the physicality and how this game has just advanced over the years. That's a good one. It's a good comeback by the Spark Proteus. Contact Golden Dolphins. Further over. Extension instruction. Hey, play. Instruction now we're seeing that goal for goal Inside. for goal, but it was that, that three goal Inside. run from South Africa that's put that pressure back on. Important goal for Cardwell. And rarely in doubt at the moment from Ellie Cardwell when she's got ball in hand. Oh, there's a double block set up on um, Bongim Somi. <laughs> I think she's shocked. Sigurdberg is still uh, shocked by that piece of play, but... Um, I think we're going to see a change from England, just off shot. We saw Fran Williams yep. make a sign to the umpire. And a change is going to happen. And it's Kwashi that's coming on. Raz Kwashi, just 22 years old. Over there, 186 over centimetres. Mavericks player as well. And we wondered whether something would happen. So Fran Williams goes off to the bench. Stacey Francis to goal defence. No, they've just changed positions. And Kwashi on at goalkeeper. They've just changed positions. Yeah, lady, sorry. So that's quite interesting because uh, Borchita moved to goal attack, I think, away the from uh, so Francis, but they're matching up again. Now, here's, uh, like the here's a little bit of, of the umpires just making a change. So all the bib changing has happened, right? All the changes have happened, but because the umpire so time called time, time for wiping the floor, yes. so they've got to go starts. back off. No bluffing. I can tell you right about now, I've got a feeling that England are going to make a change. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know <laughs> They're going to have to wait. Stand right, up. so prepare for an England change. Well, she's got one foot over the advertising hoardings. Oh, that's unfortunate there for Wongim Somi. So now, Fran Williams has gone back to the umpire. She's made the sign that she wants to make a change. So all the changes that we saw happen before are about to happen. There's um, Somi then just asking for a bit of contact, saying that that happened before. I can't believe that, Bongi and Somi. Will you uh, wait for the whistle, please? Right, the change has now happened. <laughs> we've got a dry floor and we've got a new combination that defensive end. There's the mobility of Stacey Francis. Goal defence, those quick balls. One, two, three from England. Chawani, great to read that, though. Yeah. That was um, a great deflection from Chawani, though, um, trying to just break the flow of uh, the English Roses. But um, it's just too, it's too quick. It's really unstoppable, these attack inside of the English Roses. Contact centre. So much body on body. Cardwell riding it at the moment. And this to 
pull the lead out to three again. Yeah, it's, it's amazing what uh, just a one turnover, you know, can do to the scoreboard. At some point, uh, the Spark Protests are trading by one, but uh, just that one turn has uh, put the English Roses back up um, on a three or four goal lead this time. Just shows the consistent level, though, of both these sides. Half-time score yesterday was 23-28, but it's now 20-24, England with a four-goal lead. Yes. Contact That's well set up there. Borghita offs uh, to play to Sigurd much closer to the goalpost. So it takes a while just for those that new defensive end to settle, but Razkwashi is just her seventh cap for England. Another of those on the full-time Roses program. No, Simi, you two, another advocate of clearly, clearly having a full-time program here in South Africa. But you can see physicality-wise how that helps, and, and just particularly when you get into moments like extra time, how you can have that full game. Yeah, it's crucial, you know, and I think uh, we always have to train, not just for the 60 minutes, but um, for these players to be able to play in preparation for those instances. And you could see a difference between the two sides. I think uh, England probably much more prepared. Oh, there's another Van der Marwe player of the match yesterday. Trying to add a second to her wings. Now, what can South Africa do? Paul Gita just too much over the top. And that was a replay ball from Koshi. That's so difficult in that situation. You, you don't want to not touch it because they'll have it. You don't want to touch it because they'll have it. Either way, South Africa with the ball. Yeah, it is a tough one. I mean, if the ball came blittering down court, and uh, question, did, question did the best you could under the circumstances, but. Um, I mean, congrats to, to Shasha Filimero because that was a great intercept for the Spark Proteas and that's the value she brings to this team. Now the heads are up for South Africa. That is contact not side wing. Oh, Siggy, Siggy's just too good in terms of anchoring in that shooting circle. It makes it difficult for the defenders to come around. Back that to a goal. Already South Africa up their first half score and now they've got a chance to draw themselves level. Someone excited? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm just excited by this great game of netball. <laughs> I have to always have a, an objective hat, even though my heart is, is pounding, you know, um, for the spark protests, but um, it is a great display of netball nonetheless. South Africa looking to tie it up. England knowing that. Look at just how far they're making them come across court. Great defensive work again from England. Absolutely. They just, you know, on standby, waiting the anticipation of those passes. And I think their timing defensively has been impeccable. It's so easy to go through, take the player with you. But England clean at the moment. And just when the crowd sensed it, just when Simi sensed it, just when everyone was up on their toes again, <laughs> there's one just to take a little bit of the venom out from England. It's good support there from Van Merve. The English Roses have set it up. They're forcing the Spark Proteus to play that extra pass um, to the back players. She's got the moody teenager look on Ziggy Berger. She wasn't quite <laughs> sure about that call. Unorthodox pass then, but England still have it. Oh, that's unfortunate. They can't have called against Jake Clark. Um, so it does go in favour of the spot operators. I think they were also surprised. <laughs> Did you see my face then? <laughs> still, South Africa try and get it, and, and Somi backs up well for Berger. Oh, that's a brilliant piece of play there from Portgita. And Siggy actually did well there. She set it up because she drove away from where the action was taking place, drawing Kwashi with her, and that opened up quite nicely for Portgita. Now, we called out for holding. 
have to say, I mean, physically, I think this game um, has toned down a notch yesterday uh, really? compared to yesterday. Compared to yesterday. I was going to say, I'm not going out there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, certainly, I think, you know, both teams have probably, um, you know, tried to correct uh, because it was quite a, well uh, a tight and I think a physical clash. So this looks much, uh, I think, much more in, in line with expectations. Yeah, penalties stood out like a, a beacon yesterday, didn't they? Yeah. But as we approach the last minute and a half Dan's of this quarter of this game. half, South Africa take, found back. themselves five goals down at the break yesterday. Two at the moment and back the to one back. definite improvement yes. from that those first two quarters. Not that they needed much improvement from yesterday. Yeah, definitely is an improvement, uh, you know, as far as the scoreboard is concerned. But I think again, Derek, you're still, you know, exploring those combinations. And uh, this one with Sigurdberg is certainly looking good. Um, it is something different compared to what Rademan brought in the first quarter. That is instruction the Cape Town noise goes up another notch as England put another goal on. 40 seconds of this half remaining. Two goals the difference. Big goal. This would be for South Africa just to tighten that gap again. Reminder, they won that third quarter <laughs> yesterday. Oh, they get the call. <laughs> they get the call. Yeah, that's a lucky streak there. Um, I thought Borghita released too quickly, but um, spot protests do get the benefit. So yesterday, as we approached that final whistle, England played around perhaps too much. Now South Africa looking to keep them out. Kadeen Corbin with it. She'll shoot from here and... Corbin again just shutting out that noise around her. England restore that two goal lead. South Africa have no time left on the clock. And it's England who go in. It's narrower than it was yesterday, but a lead is a lead. They're ahead at the break. South Africa 27, England 29. I knew they had changed, but thanks for confirming it. So South Africa with the high fives all round. Changes were made in that first half, Simi. We saw Radaman head to the bench with Siggy Berger come on as well. The two goals, the difference. As we head into that halftime team talk, plenty for both coaches to think about. The long walk up the red carpet, but for England the score red.
And the second match in the three-match series sees England with an arrow two-goal lead at the break already. One up in this series, of course. Seeing and Tucker alongside me. It was for England that fiery start we expected for both sides rolling back maybe on the physicality of this one. Yeah, definitely. They have rolled back on the physicality, and I think uh, that's exactly what we were hoping for because I felt that yesterday um, really <laughs> felt like a, a boxing game. But uh, today it looks different. It's flawless. You know, the girls are contesting, I think, on an equal path, and uh, it really looks uh, magnificent. We saw both teams make changes in those first two quarters, I guess. Defensively, they were weighing each other up and whether things needed to change for South Africa. Radaman, who had been so instrumental in turning things around yesterday, Poggita in a similar sort of form, but we saw her go to the bench. Yeah, and uh, you know, also I think I, I was taken by surprise, but uh, it does work. Um, I think to change things up a bit, um, because also the English Roses might have not seen this combination before, and they might have already, you know, figured and analysed uh, Radaman. So this combination for me looks much more solid. It's working for the spot Proteas. Yeah, Ziggy Berger on that goal shooter position, which meant Podgita moved out to goal attack, and for England in their defensive end, they changed to try and adapt to that. The tail of the tape, though, at half time, sees England with that two-goal lead really went so clinical both 30 30 on attempts and just the one dropped from england the rebounds there though for two some intercepts as well for those penalties much much lower than we saw in yesterday's match well let's head down courtside with andy because there's some special fans watching on the 95 world cup squad are down in the arena well, we are here in the stands where I'm joined by legends of the game. I'm in a distinguished and esteemed company, of course, so the team of 1995. I'm joined by Debbie Hammond, who is the captain, and of course, Marlene Wagner. So let's start with you, Marlene. First of all, thank you very much for joining us. You were sitting here making quite a bit of comments about the game here. So I'm going to ask you from a coach's perspective, what are you observing that the Spa Proteas need to do? At the moment, I think England are really pushing them back and they're not getting out of our centre third fast enough. So I think we really need to change the action that we are doing at the moment. England are really pinning us down in the middle court. All right, let's go to you, Debbie. Uh, a bit of a different role. We've seen you in our commentary booth a couple of times, but you're here with the 1995 squad. Tell us a bit more about that and why you have decided to congregate here. Yeah, today is a very special day. Firstly, um, this 95 team, six of us are here. It's a mini reunion. And we're here to be the supporters of the Proteus team. I think we know how much it takes to get into that green dress. So we appreciate what they've done and what they're doing, and we're the biggest supporters. Everyone's going to be asking me why I'm sitting with Debbie and she has a pair of tackies on her lap, and it's not even the same shoes. So I, I need you to clear this up for us. Yes, well, for everybody at home watching, these shoes represent the six players that cannot be with us today. We've got some in Australia, New Zealand, and the others up north. So this is for Dominique, for Irene, for Elise, for Tessa, for Laurie, and for Renee. They're still part of this team, and the shoes represent them. And uh, I'm going to get a final comment from you, Marlene, in terms of building for the future. 2023 on the horizon, you are the team that finished runners-up in the World Cup, best performing side. So what is your advice for the team for 2023? Well, yes, at the moment they will have to build, they will have to look for younger players and to incorporate them into the group because I think we need some extra defenders and goal attacks into this group but I'm quite sure they will find some excellent players to build for 2023. Thank you very much, Marilyn, and uh, thank you to you as well, Debbie. Well, uh, we know 1995 as the year for the Rugby World Cup, but for those of you at home who didn't know, the Netball World Cup team was the runners-up in the 1995 Netball World Cup best performance uh, this far. And, of course, we saw how the Spa Proteas performed earlier on this year, finishing off a fourth. So in 2023, that's something to look forward to, perhaps emulating the performance and doing one better because we are going to be the host nation. Can we be a championship? winning nation as well that remains to be seen but for now we've still got uh, two quarters left of this game it is the second test the spa proteas up against the vitality roses we're going for a break when we come back it's all that second half action